My name is Mark Corkshot. I am a professor in chemical engineering and applied chemistry, and I'm also the chair of engineering science at the moment. Uh, I'm a graduate of engineering science as well, so I graduated in 1984 uh, from EngSci in an option that was called Mechanics and Materials, and then I uh, did a master's degree in chemical engineering, and, and then I went to Cambridge University in the UK to do a PhD. Uh, I came back and became a chemical engineering professor in 1988, and uh, I've done a number of uh, administrative roles, and, and it's my great privilege to serve as Chair of Engineering Science right now. In 1998, uh, together with a business partner, we founded a company that makes uh, synthetic clarinet and saxophone reeds from a special oriented polymer. And uh, those reeds are used in the top symphony orchestras and by big uh, jazz players and on Broadway and so on today. So that company's been uh, been around for 16 years now. And it's all about material science and all about the mechanical vibration, the solid mechanics. So actually, um, the engineering science education I got as an undergrad is really at the center of that entire enterprise. Proportion your time uh, in uh, according to the relative importance of the thing that you're doing. So. It doesn't make a lot of sense, for instance, to spend um, 10 or 20 hours on a lab report that's really not that uh, important in terms of your marks, but also you're not really going to get uh, as much learning benefit from, from 10 hours on a lab report as you do from 10 hours of general review uh, in advance of a midterm. You should not be coming to inside because it's a great way to get a degree to then become a doctor or lawyer or an academic or a PhD. You're supposed to come to engineering science because you want to challenge and you know fill your brain basically. You want to learn as much as possible. Our emphasis is to provide kind of a very deep, enriched and fundamental uh, basis that allows you to, you know, foundation for an engineering career that allows you to then go out and explore any of the specifics. We subsidized or supported about 51 or two students this uh, past summer, or this current summer. Um, and of those, about 35, I would say, are going overseas. So we arranged for about 25 spots directly. Uh, 12 students went to Singapore. We have students in, uh, several students in Germany, one in Cambridge, one in Osaka couple in Switzerland, um, a few other places. So those are positions that we've arranged and then we invite applications from students on a competitive basis. We have a special fund put aside for students that are able to find their own exceptional opportunities. So if we have students that um, find a position at, uh, in a great lab at um, MIT or, or Caltech or Stanford, and then we also support uh, a number of students, 12 or something, please don't quote me on the specific numbers, uh, for doing research in University of Toronto labs. So I think that everybody that comes should do something extracurricular. There should be either sports or music or art, drama, philosophy, whatever it is. I don't think it's a good idea to come here and just put your head down and only work. That's not going to produce uh, a well-balanced person, it's probably not going to produce a healthy person. Well, I taught first year physical chemistry to inside students for a long time. And I would always joke that uh, one of the great benefits of the program is that you appreciate your Christmas vacations like never before. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, uh, my, my last name is Kortschot, but it's in Dutch it's Kortschot. So I'm, uh, I'm uh, cheering for the Dutch team. <laughs>